hello so i've had so much happen since my last video i've been meaning to do a video for ages i just haven't got around to it just i don't know there's been a lot going on <laughs> if you've been following me on instagram you'll see that i actually spent 10 days in hospital with neutropenic sepsis um so since the last video i did and i was waiting for my neutrophil results my neutrophils were bad they were down i think they were 0.7 if they were the lowest they've been for a long time um and then they um said I couldn't have the chemo and then the weekend came and went it came Sunday night I didn't feel very well I went to bed early um and I woke up on the Monday and I felt not very well at all I spent all day in bed and then the Tuesday the, sorry the Monday night I didn't feel very well I had a bit of a temperature and I was rolling around um I actually had a bit of diarrhea and sickness a bit of TMI but <laughs> um but on that basis I then the next day phoned the chemo centre because if you've had chemo um and cancer treatment and or you know someone that has you know that if you've had any of those things high temperature diarrhea and sickness um or generally feeling really unwell not being able to get out of bed you should um go and see someone because it could be a sign of sepsis or some other um bad thing so i got hold of them naturally they said you need to go to a and e so i went up there <laughs> it was really busy i think this was when the strikes had just started or there, there wasn't there wasn't any room anywhere to sit or anything um it was quite bad um they did some tests and they said that my neutrophils were actually dropping as they were from when they first did a test when i first got there they then did another one i think about eight hours later and my neutrophils had dropped by about i think they dropped by a lot i can't even remember it, it feels like so long ago and it actually wasn't that long ago um but on that basis they said that um and that are my white my white blood cell no my markers my no, sorry, let me get this right. My infection markers were really high. So my neutrophils were really low, my infection markers were high. Um, and then they did a test after 38 hours I've been in A&E, they did a test for COVID and I actually had COVID too <laughs> and influenza. Um, so at that point they said, look, you're going to have to stay in. And they actually had to isolate me. They put me in a room <clears throat> and they moved me the next day from that room. But I was in isolation for five days until my COVID test came back negative. Um, the whole time they were doing this, they were doing other tests as well, because I've been getting some headaches and other things. They'd booked me in for a head CT scan. I think they had some concerns. There was something on my brain. Um, and then they did a, um, heart scan to see if everything was okay there. They did a chest x-ray and they said there's a few signs of infection there, but it's not an unusual thing. Um, but they, what they couldn't figure out when they were giving me the, um, neutrophil injections, they'd give me fliscrasm injections to make my neutrophils go back up. They'd go up and then they'd go back down again. Um, so then they were sort of going up, down, up, down the whole time, but they couldn't get them to level out and, and stay at a level they could actually let me go. So, um, I spent 10 days in there. So that took us to the eve of Christmas Eve and they still wanted to keep me in. And I wasn't particularly happy about it. <laughs> and, um, I had a, a few doctors and nurses and things on my side saying that we should let her home or let her go. And they let me out on the basis that I actually went back in the next day and had an injection and I went in and had the injection and I think my, they'd gone, I think they were at the level then they said, you, you're okay, you can stay out, but we want to test you again. Um, I think they were 18, they were quite high anyway, and um, they then said come back on the Wednesday. So I had a nice Christmas and a, a nice Christmas Eve, Boxing Day, and I went back in on the Wednesday um, and they were okay, but they'd gone down to four, I later found out, because I know I went in on the, the Fridays, so this is the, a week ago Friday <laughs> and um they were at four so uh, they found out they were at four but they weren't high enough for me to have my chemo on the Friday that has just got really confusing I'm really sorry <laughs> so then I went in the Friday just gone um and they again were very low um so I couldn't have my chemo again so basically since November I haven't had a chemo I'm still only two cycles down I should technically have finished my chemo if it had all gone smoothly on the 7th of February it's now the 11th of January, so I really I should be a few weeks off of finishing, and I'm, I haven't even had round three. But the good news is, when I spoke to my consultant, he said that I can have my pre-chemo this week, which hasn't yet been booked in, which is a little bit concerning. They normally book it in the week before, but I'm waiting for the booking team to call me. So this, so it's Wednesday today, so this Thursday, Friday, tomorrow or Friday, I should be having pre-chemo for chemo next week. And if my neutrophils are low, they're going to give me the injection to boost them anyway. So that next week I can have chemo. I've got a scan booked into the 30th of this month to um, a PET-CT to see if the 
chemo is actually working, which is where I want to be at. I wanted to have done that already, but that's that's the aim at the moment is to get that bit done because then we know what we're doing. Because as I said in my previous video, once that's been done, they he can then decide if he wants to continue with the chemo. If it's working, then he'll continue with it and maybe do some uh, radiotherapy, which would be good. And if it's not working, then obviously he's going to stop because there will be no point in doing it. Um, so if you've been following me on Instagram, you will see a few snip, snippet bits of me being in hospital. It wasn't really that exciting. It was a really <laughs> weird and surreal 10 days because by that point, I didn't actually feel ill. By the time they actually admitted me, I'd been in there for 38 hours in A&E and I actually felt a lot better. So when he said that I had COVID, I actually didn't have, really have any symptoms of COVID. I was actually okay. By that point, I felt fine. So it was a bit of a bummer, really. But I spent a nice few days, met some nice people, some nice nurses, and I've been in since to have a few checkups and injections and sort of get to know people. <laughs> it's quite nice. Um, but that's the uh, literally the only plus side. The food was terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, and I did a little video of one of my rooms, my second room I was in, my lockdown room. Um, so I'll put that, insert that here. You can have a look at that, which is quite nice. So here's my bed and my storage area where I keep all my clothes and my wash stuff and things. Um, here's the front door that I'm not allowed out of because <laughs> I'm on lockdown, um, so I'm not allowed to leave the room. And around here we've got the bathroom, literally the bathroom, here is the toilet. Don't worry, it's clean. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not allowed to leave the room, so I have to do everything in there, which is delightful. Um, here's my sink. And over here I've got my chair, where I can look out my window, which I'll show you in a second. So it's not a very big room, but you don't want it too big, because you get lost. <laughs> and yep, here's the window, I can sit in my chair and look out at the beautiful view. There's some trees, but the birds can't get in because there's a net at the top to stop them, which is a shame, but there wouldn't be many birds out today, it's pretty miserable. So yeah, there we go, that's my room. <laughs> So yeah, that's the update so far. That's what's going on. There's, yeah, it feels like a lot more has happened in that time because it's been a few weeks and I kept thinking I'm going to do a video because I need to do an update and so you guys know what's going on. But it's been, I don't know, difficult to get back into things really. I think Christmas and New Year is sort of like that anyway. I didn't really do much for New Year. I was in bed by 11. <laughs> I'm not really a big New Year person. Um, but it's nice to have a nice fresh start to the New Year um hopefully this year is going to be a good year for everybody i think everyone's gonna have a nice year this year um just i want to get this next bit done so i can know where i stand and then i know what which part what you know which part of the fight i've got to fight next whether it's going to be hardcore chemo still or whether i'm gonna fight it in other ways so um yeah i hope everyone had a really good christmas a really good new year you got to spend time with your family and your loved ones um and that this year has started off good for you um and if it hasn't i hope it gets better so, yeah, take it easy, guys.